Hey everyone, it's Freena Jadav here at HB Splash Checks, and we have Urshid Parikh with us from Mayfield. Hi, welcome. Glad to be here. So what brings you out here today? What are you excited about when you think of Precision Health? Uh, so for me, Precision Health is actually um, a set of precision solutions that impact all part of the health and wellness ecosystem. So Precision Health, in our opinion, is made up of five big opportunities. Mm -hmm. There is Precision um, Wellness, Precision Care, Precision uh, tools, uh, precision diagnostics, and precision medicine. And uh, and which one of these is taking off? Actually, all of them are. Really? Yes. Same level. They all. There are. If I said you have to rank these or shape, how are you going to rank them? So I think um, in the end, uh, it comes. So there are companies that are breaking out in all five of these buckets. Okay. And uh, and they all part of sort of reinventing sort of the healthcare ecosystem part by part. Okay. Um, and and sort of having the kind of impact that drives sort of. Uh, uh, the outcomes that people want with a greater degree of efficiency. And so the, the trick ends up being in wherever you're building a company in, in this whole precision sort of solutions ecosystem, it comes down to knowing fully who your user is going to be and who your player is going to be. Mm -hmm. And if you can truly delight your user yes. and, and have a business case for your player, uh, and the, the business case for them is either better outcomes or efficiency, uh, or, or lower cost if you're kind of trading drugs or any other stuff like that. And then sort of 3 billion, can you actually get these drugs faster to market um, with lower cost? Um, you end up having a proposition that kind of works. And so the top mistake actually mm -hmm. ends up being is that people end up spending all their seed money mm -hmm. uh, on only the product without figuring out the business model. Yes. And then they come looking for bridge loans. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, well, but I think the, the other part is that you cannot really, I mean, you need a sufficient amount of financing to kind of do this thing, right? So the bridge yes. loan part can only work for a temporary thing. Yes. Yeah. How much seed funding does a startup need these days in this precision health space to get to exactly the kind of milestones you're talking about? So uh, it depends on the category and the company. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have a company called Cuventus, which is precision care in hospitals, and it's become the leading company on application of AI in hospital operations. And that was a company that had raised two million in seed and was uh, already with ten customers and a million in revenue, by having spent only five hundred wow. before. So Impressive. Um, you know, um, in, on, on the other uh, extreme, we have a company that is doing precision sequencing. It's become sort of the leading company around synthesized DNA sequencing mm. um, called Mission Bio. And in their case, uh, you know, they had actually spent uh, close to six, seven million dollars, of which five million was in SBI outlets. They had a lot of pre sort of financing, but it took several years for them to prove that the science was kind of ready out of that. Okay. So it comes down, and then most recently we just invested in a company which started out with a 20 plus million of a series A. It's called Mammoth Bio, which is essentially doing CRISPR-based diagnostics. Okay. And, uh, and, and so it, it varies. So these are heavy tech companies. Anything in wellness? Oh yeah, um, so Zipongo. Uh, okay. So Zipongo is basically a company that makes it very easy for people to eat well at scale and is showing uh, sustained engagement for populations which is better than Twitter and Snapchat. No and way. And Instagram what, levels. Yeah. what uh, age range are they targeting? Uh, so they target full populations. What makes their solution so effective is that they are able to address a very broad based population. Okay. And uh, they have figured out the business model where they get the employers and payers to pay for it because they are carrying sort of the population health risk. And what was their secret sauce in getting that customer adoption? Because that's the hardest these days. Correct. And so, uh, um, and this is where I think there's a tendency for people to want to look at games and gamification. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't really give you sustained engagement over a 12-month period, mm -hmm. right? Because if you mm -hmm. see the, typ the typical mm -hmm. art for games, you see yep. a decline, right? So Fitbit yep. would be an example of something which starts out great, but within 90 days, 90% mm -hmm. of the people stop using it. That's right. And so if you have to truly engage users, you have to sort of find a way to change their behavior mm -hmm. and essentially become part of a habit for them. Mm -hmm. and, and, so different, and so you have to recognize that different people, and hence precision ones, you have to recognize different people mm -hmm. are different, their motivations are different. 90% mm -hmm. of the people actually get stressed out about healthy. So yes. you have to figure out what personality profile this person is going to be. Mm -hmm. What do they care about? Do they care about cost, you know, healthy eating, uh, convenience, uh, sort of taste? Mm -hmm. And then kind of find this optimal match where you are sort of evolving their digital environment and sort of getting that back. Um, and, and then and you have to iterate it very fast. And so when you see the engagement and adoption curves from those companies, uh, you know the data, you see that over a three-year period, how it has gone up. So there's a lot of very fast iteration exciting. to figure that out. And that's on the wellness side. Those companies don't need a lot of money to prove the point. Mm -hmm. So what does Mayfield look for in a startup? Uh, uh, may, uh, so the simple answer is people. People build companies. So the crux of this thing turns out to be for people first investor. And uh, you know, it, it really kind of comes down to you know what is the mission, and if the mission is achieved, how does it become 
uh, a big company, how do you, how are you going to create a movement that realizes that mission? And, and, and we want to be on the journey all the way. Exciting stuff. Thank you so much, Rashid. Pleasure to meet you, Rina.